Hello, everybody. Welcome to this month's Cherry on Top Hop. This hop is hosted by all of the members of the Cherry on Top Crafts Design Team. So be sure to check out the hop list in the description box below. In addition to the hop list, if you hop along and comment on each video, you have a chance to win a really nice generous gift certificate to a cherry on top shop so make sure you hop through say hello to all of the amazing cherries on the cherry design team and enjoy my project today so i'm again working with the rainbow garden collection from paper rose studio and my plan for this layout is that i want to have a printed background so sometimes when we get lots of collections there are certain papers that um are kind of made to be a background so they kind of already have the style of a layout they already have kind of like a page style or page inspiration going i'm showing a couple of the ones that i have from the paper rose collection really almost chose this one um and i'm just showing you I'm thinking about how I can use one of these patterned papers as my background. So that was the background I wanted to focus on today. During the month of April, we will be focusing on backgrounds on our channel, how, or on my channel, how I choose the backgrounds for projects, how I decide, um, do we need mixed media? Do we need a white background? How that all works. So that's a kind of my own personal focus for all of my videos during the month of April. And today we're going to focus on using a background that is uh, printed where we have a lot of the design elements started for us. So I chose this, pa this pattern paper as my background. I really liked the way that there were two corners that were full of flowers and then you had a very obvious diagonal design going right so we have a very obvious open area on this paper that we can use as a starting point or a jumping off point for our layout i'm going to mat my photo this is a photo of my niece she is growing up entirely too fast this is my older niece Anna. Many of you uh, are probably used to seeing the tiny one because <laughs> uh, she does a feature, focus feature a lot in a lot of my scrapbook layouts, but this is her older sister. And I just loved, we were at an event and she looked so pretty. She had the most beautiful necklace on. She had picked out herself and I asked her, I said, I need a, a current picture of you, just you, your beautiful self. And uh, so here's that picture. And that's the one we're going to scrapbook today. So I'm going to place my picture right in the middle. And then my plan is to just kind of build up those sides and follow that diagonal design. I am going to mark where my photo is going to go because I want to add a little bit of splatter. I'm also drawing a line here. And I am going to use that line to anchor a lot of my embellishments and to keep them where I want them. So I really want this to look like my butterflies and embellishments are going to follow this pencil line that's going to swoop up and through that diagonal pattern on the paper. To reinforce that diagonal line, uh, I'm going to do some splatters. So I have some pig aqua pigments from Brutus Monroe. I have black and gilded and I'm just spraying them right onto my glass board studio mat, adding some water and then using a round brush to splatter. And I'm trying to, now splattering is never an exact science, right? But I'm trying to keep my splatter to the, that swooping line that I drew. So I'm trying to con kind of concentrate the splatter onto that line and not get too far out of the bounce because that line that I drew is going to be, um, it's not going to, I'm going to erase most of it, but you know, the parts that you would see, but it's really going to be my guide for the design of my layout. 
And I showed you that little card. So while my splatters were drying, I created a card to with the, just the scraps from this collection that were hanging out on my desk. I thought I would show those to you. Now, um, I prematurely thought that my splatters were dry and they weren't, so I did smudge one. Uh, that's okay, we're just gonna cover that up. So now I'm going through these embossed die cuts from Paper Rose Studio, and I'm punching out some flowers and some butterflies. I'm going to use the flowers just as an anchoring point on either side of my photo. And again, I tucked those flowers in right where those pencil marks kind of started. And now I'm just going to follow the line that I drew, that little swoopy line. And I'm going to kind of put my butterflies along that line. And it's going to re kind of make that line visible, right? So it's just a pencil mark right now. But I really do want it to be something that is visible that when you look at the page, you're like, oh, look at that. She kept all of her embellishments to this specific area. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get all of these butterflies into place where I want them. I'm also going to go ahead and cover up that smudged uh, little droplet there as well. And as I put these butterflies into place, I am using a Tombow Mono eraser to erase my pencil line. Uh, I love this eraser. It's fabulous and it's not the sand eraser. Uh, the sand eraser would take the uh, pattern off the paper, but the, the softer just mono eraser takes off the pencil line and doesn't disturb or mess with the ink that's on the paper. So let's talk titling. Initially, I was going to use these white Pink First Studio cardstock stickers for my title. Oh, and my my photo was crooked, so I got to this point in the layout and I was like, wait, my photo's crooked. I fix it, it's okay. Anyway, and I wanted to, I, but I knew what I wanted my title to be, and my title was not, these letters were too big. It wasn't gonna fit where I wanted it to fit. So I'm gonna switch out the white ones for another set of Pink Fresh Studio Puffy stickers, and I'm gonna go ahead and put my title together. My title for this layout is going to be My Darling Girl, and then I'm going to go ahead and just put the date that the photo was taken underneath my title. Next, I am gonna grab some sequins from my stash, um, and I am going to add tiny little clusters of sequins all along that same swirly line that I drew at the beginning. So that swirly line, it really is almost the anchoring or the basis of my page design. And it was inspired by me choosing to use one of the printed background papers. Most collections have these types of papers where they have a pre-printed almost design on them. And sometimes it can be difficult to know how to use those papers as a jumping off point for a layout. Uh, so my best advice is if that's the type of paper that you want to use, choose your collection and then choose you know what collection you want and then choose your pattern papers that are have those pre-printed designs just like i did at the beginning of this video pull them all out and then audition your photo on them until you find the one that speaks to you that you think your photo looks really nice with and there's like and and your photo kind of fits really well onto the design that's already printed on the page we're going to do more pages like this with these pre-printed designed backgrounds um, during the course of April as well. So I'm just going ahead, dotting these fun sequins all along that line, and then our layout will be finished. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you are new to my channel, I would love it if you would subscribe, hit the notification button so you don't miss any of my videos. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and I will talk to you all again very soon. Bye.